Hi, I'm Brian Ierson. I'm one of the trainers with the Computer Workshop. I'm going to continue to build the network diagram that we started to build in the last video. But this time I'm going to focus on the actual shape data of the shapes as well as creating our own stencil. We are beginning at this point with our network in place but without any of our workstations. So we're going to talk about shape data and customizing that to suit our needs. So to begin with, I am going to drag a PC onto my page and I'm going to right click on this, accessing the data set of commands from my menu and I'm going to bring up the shape data window. You may or may not see a lot of information here. This window can very easily be resized. And I'm going to stretch this way down so that you can see we have a whole slew of fields that we can enter information into. Now some of these I don't need. And there's actually one more that isn't here that I would like to add. So in order for this to happen, I'm going to edit this shape data by simply right clicking on my shape again going back into the data section and I'm going to choose to define my shape data. This will open up the define shape data window and you can see here listed below are all the different fields that this has associated with it. If we select one we can see the information up above pertaining to that field. So I can see the label, I can see what type of field this is going to be, is it going to contain a text value, a string of characters, numeric, fixed values, variables, boolean, currency, dates, duration. So you have some pre-built sets that you can work with. Depending on what you have chosen, you might also want to consider applying an appropriate format. Now to begin with, I need to remove a lot of these that I no longer will be requiring. So I'm going to start by selecting location and I'm going to simply click the delete button to remove it. So now I have trimmed this list down considerably to just the key elements that I do actually require. Now with this in place I'm going to add in the missing field that I do need to add to this. So I'm going to click the new button Property 8 is now my label, and I will change this to date of purchase. This will not be a string of text. This will be a date value that I'm looking for. And then from the format drop down, I can choose the format that I would like to use. In my case, I'm going to use the month, day, and year, but fully spelled out. Once I have my label, the data type, and the format in place. I am not going to put anything in as a default value, nor will I put in a prompt. I'm going to leave everything as is and simply tap OK. Notice what happened in the shape data window is that my modifications have been instantly reflected. I'm going to take this and resize it a little bit and leave everything blank. So now I've got my shape data organized the way that I want. I now want to start applying formatting to the label for my object. So I'm going to double click onto that shape, type in the basic default name that I would like to have. And in this case, I'm just going to type workstation and put in a pound sign. I would also like to format this, so I will do a quick control A to select all of my text and modify it. I'm going to deselect that and there is my modified shape. I now have a custom label and I also have a custom shape data set. At this point I have finished the first one of these so I am going to come back into my shapes panel. I'm going to go to the more shapes drop down where I will create a new stencil. And I now have a stencil and it might be numbered six or whatever 
As you can see, the text below stencil 6 quite simply says drop quick shape here. So I will go into my document, I will select my shape, and I will drag that shape and drop it into my stencil space. It will want to name this Master 2, which I don't really like, so here again I'm going to click once to select that, or I can right click on this and I can choose Rename Master. I like simple and descriptive names. I am capitalizing the first letter of each word in this multi-word name to make this much, much more legible. When I'm done, I will tap the Enter key and I have now created my first stencil shape, which I can now drag on as many times as I need. Now, as you remember in the previous video, we had a series of workstations above and below the shipping network switch. So I want to go ahead and create a modified version of this shape. Now what I need to do to make my secondary shape is to move this text label above my object. So for this, I need to come back up and use my text block tool, which can be found in the tools group on the home tab in the ribbon. Now when I select my object, I can just raise that straight up above it and situate it where I think it looks good. Back to my pointer tool, I can now take this object and again drag it back into my stencil where I will rename this also. Notice that my stencil has a save icon because I have made modifications to it. I am now given the opportunity to save it. When clicking the Save Stencil button, a Save As window will open and I will by default be in the My Shapes folder in my documents on this PC. I'm going to change the name to something that is appropriate. In this case, I'm going to just call this My Network Shapes. Now that I have created and saved my stencil, I can begin to use the shapes that I have added to it. So I'll begin by dragging my first shape out and drag an instance of my second shape. I will use my smart guides to help align those and then I can select them both and group them. Remember to select multiple objects you start with the first one, hold the shift key and select each of the subsequent objects. Now that I have those selected, I might want to consider grouping them again, and I can do that by right-clicking and using the group command from my contextual menu. I have shown you in the past where you can access that up here on your ribbon, but for matter of expediency, right-clicking does save you a little bit of time. I can position that where I want, and then to duplicate it, use the control key and drag out copies then I can select all of my copies. With all of my objects now selected, I am able to distribute them evenly. This is done by going back up to the Arrange group, the Position drop-down, and choosing to distribute these horizontally. Now those have all been positioned exactly as I would like them. At this point, I do want to ungroup those so that I can assign specific attributes to each one of these individually in a simple manner. So reselect them, right click on your selection, choose group and ungroup from the contextual menu. Now I have all of my objects in play. I'm going to move this over because this is what I need to focus on and we will now begin to import the data that we want to associate with each of our workstations. This is done by going to the data tab in the ribbon and you can see you have two options here for ex external data. You can either do a quick import or you can do a custom import. A quick import allows you to simply go ahead and search for your workbook. In this case I'm going to go ahead and browse so after I click the Browse button, I can navigate to wherever I need to go to locate my Excel workbook that contains all of my information and 
simply select that and open. At this point I can now click the Done button and this will import all of my data. I have zoomed in to my drawing to make this easier for everybody to see. I have my external data panel opened which opens automatically after I have finished importing my data and I can see all of the individual records. The external data window can be resized and you can see all of the columns from the spreadsheet are listed here and these are directly related to the field modifications we made to the shape data earlier. Now I'm going to resize this so that I can focus on what we're doing. In order to link my data to the specific shape, all that I need to do is select that record from my external data panel and drag it and drop it onto my shape. This does add the shape data graphic to our existing shape and if we do not want that we will simply right click on our shape, go back into the data set of options and choose to remove the data graphic. So now we can see that this has a direct link to this record in our spreadsheet. I will quickly add all of the other links and remove the data graphics. And now I can deselect. With that being done, I can safely close my external data. I do not need my data graphic panel so I'm going to close that also. If you wanted to see the information associated with this workstation simply right click on that shape and choose the shape data and you can see all of the data associated with this workstation and as you select each you will see that information is unique to each if you ever needed to, you can also refresh your data from the Data tab by clicking the Refresh All. That's it for today's tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson and picked up a couple of new tricks. If you did, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel because as you know, we do put out new videos every week. So until next time, take care for now.